I'm at the Sony booth at CES and we are checking out their new PSVR 2 headset. And holy cow, is it a big upgrade over the last gen version of this. The original version of it launched, I believe, in 2017, almost six years ago now at this point, and has received very little in the way of updates outside of just game support. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of great games for PSVR, but in a lot of ways, their old headset is lacking, and they've really addressed a lot of things. The big one is that it's entirely switched to inside-out tracking. Before, you had to use the PlayStation camera along with the sex toy-shaped move controllers that were like worse, they were worse than Wiimotes, basically, at the end of the day. And tracking was very, very limited. You had the lights on the end of the move controllers that would prevent you from being able to turn around or even really move in a very wide area. This is gonna allow you just to have a much larger play space. Like, look at the size of this booth. It's not all for show. Because it's inside out, you have way more freedom of movement for truly free VR. Except. You still have a cable, but it's just the one cable that connects you to your PlayStation 5. A lot of the big upgrades come in the form of the display. It still uses an OLED for great blacks and great color, but we have an improved field of view going from 100 on the old one to 110 on the new one. A massive bump in resolution, going from a pitiable 960 by 1080 to a 2000 by 2040 resolution for each eye. A huge increase and it looks really great. Also a massive bump in refresh rate. This is now gonna give you 120 hertz for your refresh rate, which is gonna help with smoothness and response time. The original PSVR's response time was about 16 milliseconds, which is about at the cusp that you can do for comfortable VR. Any slower and people start getting sick. This has reduced it to around eight milliseconds, a far more pleasurable experience. On the headset, you have two places to adjust it. On the back, there's a button in the middle that allows you to pull to, ad to adjust the headband, then a dial to dial it in exactly how you want it. And you have a button here that allows you to move it a bit further forward or back, which makes it more accommodating for different types of faces. One thing that was kind of weird is this, uh, like accordion rubber gasket. Uh, I found it comfortable enough, but it's not as nice as say a fabric or a foam, but it does have the benefit of being a little bit easier to clean and you won't have to buy a replacement as frequently like you eventually will have to do with a foam gasket. On the front here, we have our IPD adjustment, and on the bottom you have a microphone, the power button, and a button to activate pass-through. Something that we saw on the HTC Vive Elite, XR Elite was an RGB pass-through camera that made it really, really convenient to take a break from your game and pick up your phone without having to take the headset off. This is still using just these cameras, and it's not quite as good of an experience. If you need to like reply to a text or something, you will have to take the headset off. But what you really wanna talk about is gaming. You're on the PlayStation 5 after all. Now you might be thinking, wait, if we're running at nearly 4K and we're running at 120 frames per second, how is that gonna work? Well, this takes advantage of foveated rendering. So using eye tracking in the device, it will only render the maximum resolution of the pixels that your eye is actually looking at. And everything else can be reduced in resolution as it enters your periphery. This will allow for far better looking games that are far easier to run. And it has a profound effect on the smoothness of games. Also new is the controllers. As I said before, the old controllers were pretty outdated feeling more like Wiimotes than uh, anything else in VR. The new Sense controllers, these ones don't have weird balls on the front of them. They're using the infrared tracking from the headset for everything. Now, it's also a more conventional controller layout now that we've kind of found one that I think most people agree on is good for VR. You have a thumbstick on each controller. Um, you have two face buttons, obviously your start menu and stuff like that. Triggers, and these are using the same adaptive triggers that you can find on the DualSense controller, which means that if you want to have a resistive action, like say you're pulling a bow back, it'll actually resist the pull. You also have a grip button on each side, and it has finger tracking for up to three fingers. So each of these buttons also has touch sensitivity. So when you just lay your fingers on them, you will have like a closed fist, and you'll be able to do like stuff like make a peace sign, or maybe something a little bit less kind than a peace sign. And all of these features bring this up to date with a lot of the competing standards, which is great because the controllers on the original PSVR sucked. <laughs> we also reap the benefits of Sony's continued quest into enhanced haptics. So you get the same kind of haptic feedback here as well as you get haptic feedback on the back of the headset. So if you get conked on the back of the head, you'll know. We're about to play a game with Horizon VR Call of the Mountain, but first you're gonna listen to something from Dbrand. Okay, so our sponsor dropped out for CES 2023, but Dbrand footed the bill. They're making me come out here on the streets and offer people tech tips for free. And I hate it. You want a tech tip? A uh, tech tip? Yeah, like a, like a tip for helping with technology. Uh, I'm okay. Can I offer you a tech tip? Tech tip? A tech tip? For? 
for any kind of technology? They don't want tech tips. No one wants tech tips. To learn more about who made me do this, go to shortlinus.com. So hold those in and move your arms at your side. Yeah, ah. it'll actually walk you. Uh -huh. Grab an arrow, you're gonna reach over your back, and you're gonna pull, put it in, knock, shoot. Okay, you know, cool. Yeah, you're totally good sweet. to go. Here, I'll toss the headphones on you as well. Oh, sweet. Uh, Here you go. Oh. Um, reach over your shoulder and you can pull the boat out. Ah. Yeah. Well, this one I'm not so good at. <laughs> it is difficult, yeah, especially the first couple of tries. Yeah. Oh, sweet, thank you. So I just finished playing it and we've just had to move over here. We ran out of time in the booth and not gonna lie, it was pretty fun. There were some issues with tracking, the stuff that they can probably fix with some software in the future. I found that the range of where I could move my hands was a little bit lacking. The moment you get kind of behind the 90 degree mark of your head, it totally loses track of where your arms are. Having cameras positioned further back would have benefited that a lot, and I don't know how much of a difference they can really make. That's one of the benefits you have with base stations that you'll just never really get with inside out tracking. Um, the headset itself was comfortable, very easy to adjust, surprisingly usable, but I also noticed some issues with the screen. Well, the foveated rendering worked really well. It was weird. There's this crazy demo where you like look at individual dots, it tracks where your eyes move, and that's how you calibrate it. And then you could control the menus just by looking at the exactly where you wanted to go and selecting it just by like blinking your eyes. It was very, very well done. But I noticed at the edge of my view, there was significant chromatic aberration, which indicates a lens issue. We don't know if that's just this unit or if that's gonna affect the whole lineup, but your mileage may vary. I find I'm very sensitive to stuff like that. Some people aren't. And if it is a problem, they won't have time to fix it because good news, it comes out February 22nd this year. That's just a little over a month away. And, and it's gonna be launching for 550, or as they say, 549, which makes it a pretty solid value against competitors. The Quest is $400, but this is gonna be a bit more powerful, much higher specs. And you can feel a little bit more confident that it's gonna be backed up with awesome games that are gonna be developed from Sony. Horizon Call of the Mountain, which you played here, was pretty fun. They're releasing Resident Evil Village in VR for it, which if it's as good as Resident Evil 7 was on VR, will be a very fun time. One thing that's a downside is that they don't actually know if there's gonna be a backwards compatibility with the original PSVR library. So some games that you may have loved, like maybe the, Dark, the, like the Iron Man VR, stuff like that, might actually not function on the new hardware. We know that Gran Turismo has received an update that's gonna allow it to work with the new hardware, and you'll probably see a lot of the first party Sony games doing that, but for now it remains up in the air. One more thing that I forgot to mention, you get two of the Sense controllers, the headset itself, and a set of earbuds that are gonna be able to take advantage of the Tempest audio, which is Sony's spatial audio implementation. They also can integrate into the headset. You have a little hole in a channel where you can put the wire through. It's a lot nicer. We weren't able to use them here because of sanitation issues, but it seems like a promising value for what you're getting in the box. Bye-bye. Uh, Thanks for watching Short Circuit. If you like this video, go watch our other CES stuff. Mwah.